hermeneutics is designed to be a method of discerning biblical meaning outside of the constraints of my worldview. But they have shifted hermeneutics into just another worldview lens. We affirm it communicates best, in other it being the mm -hmm. historical grammatical methodology of interpreting the Bible, it communicates best to Western modernist evangelicals. To me, they're really tipping their hand there in that they're they're saying, you know, in this tribe, we tend to use yeah. this method. Um, is that how you're reading that as well? Yeah, they have all these qualifiers there, Western. So, which in the language of the day, and this is where this is where I'll say this. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they believe that they are they're doing their best to reinforce that later on they say that you know the histor this grammatical historical method is the best method or whatever. I, I believe they I think they're reinforcing that. But I, I think what I see in this document, if I'm being as generous as I can in reading it, is I think what you have is people who don't understand um the language that they're using because you know mm -hmm. to be a faculty member usually at this level you have a very focused educational background you've studied only old testament so there's an old testament section of this but there's somebody doing hermeneutics that has studied like within a very specific discipline so i think what you have is people who are outside of their academic discipline trying to integrate thoughts that they don't fully comprehend to be honest um, and, and I think that's what I see here is, is happening. Because if, if you look at the words like Western modernist evangelicals, a lot of those are code in the language for white. Uh, and, and that's why I think that messenger's question comes out the way it does is because now I don't know if they mean it that way, but that's the way many would read it. Again, if we're talking about cultural bias or racial bias or those, you know, how do we all perceive things? They've got to understand the words they use have uh, are being interpreted a certain way. Uh, and so if they're going to use that language, they need to be aware that what they're really saying there to many readers would be, we affirm that it communicates best to white Christians. Yeah. Uh, of a certain kind, not even all of those, you know, specifically even general. So I think that's the, yeah. Uh, it, it, the problem is it turns hermeneutics then into really this, a tool of application, not of interpretation. And that's what they're really doing is they're saying hermeneutics is primarily to interpret a, is, is a, is for the purpose of applying something, not for really genuinely interpreting or understanding the, the authorial intent. Uh, and so they change almost what the purpose of hermeneutics is in this, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then we go right to the next sentence. They, they say, you know, we affirm cause they're, they're doing these kind of affirmation statements mm -hmm. here. We affirm how other cultures, races, ethnicities have much to offer in using this, the grammatical historical method, and other methods for interpreting the Bible. My mm -hmm. signature, and I, I'm assuming this was written by the hermeneutics chair um, yeah. at, at Gateway. Uh, my hermeneutics signature assignment requires students to examine a text from two cultural, racial, ethnic viewpoints other than their own. So it seems that, I mean, I would really want to hear him unpack, you know, what are these yeah. other methods for interpreting the Bible that you think could also have validity possibly yeah. or what would be the purpose of this assignment uh, in looking at the, the scripture mm -hmm. through these other viewpoints is it. And so let's unpack, you know, some possibilities yeah. there of what that's talking about. Sure. Well, to, to unpack that too, go, going back that one sentence, just where he said, we affirm, a com, you know, this hermeneutical method, the historical medical communicates best. So look what happens there. And this is what, why this next sentence where you're pointing out has a difference. He's saying that hermeneutics communicates to us something. In other words, we're choosing a method that we, from our cultural racial bias, means something to us. But hermeneutics doesn't communicate anything to us. Hermeneutics is not a worldview lens. They're treating hermeneutics as if it's a lens of a worldview. And so I'm picking the worldview lens that suits my preferences. Or my social location. You know, yes, yeah, so my, my social location. My gender, my ethnic, ethnicity, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. 
Yeah. So, but hermeneutics is designed to be a method of discerning biblical meaning outside of the constraints of my worldview. But they have shifted hermeneutics into just another worldview lens. So in other words, hermeneutics now is no longer capable of helping me see outside my worldview lens, my race, ethnicity, all those things. It's just another, it's just the tool that speaks best to me within my lens. So what I, what I think happens here is that we all become trapped within our particular worldview shaped by our gender, our sex, our gen, our, our race, all those sort of things. And now we're just sort of, it becomes a, almost a, a way of just circular reasoning. It's like, here's the, here's what I, here's the, the black meaning now. perspective. Here's the queer yeah. perspective. Here's the feminist perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening in this thing. Uh, it's, it's, you see this within, we talked about contextual theology. You see it in a secular world uh, about ideas of what come to, came to my mind actually is the concept of colonialism or anti-colonialism or decolonization as it's often referred to uh, in the secular literature. Uh, and I think that's essentially, he's not using those words here, but they're describing these sort of decolonization concepts, you know, decolonize the text, decolonize my hermeneutics, decolonize the language. And for those not familiar, um, you know, just the whole idea is that, you know, in the 19th, 20th century, it, decolonization was about a political self-determination. So when Britain took over uh, India, right, they, they were a British colony, right? Well, we said we want to have our own political self-determination. So decolonization meant political self-determination uh, of its own, own people groups. In the 21st century now, what that means, it's about epistemic self-determination of occupied truths. So now epistemically, I need to find, I need to be able to find my, my way of knowing needs to be taken out of a Western way. My way of knowing has to be taken out of a white way. It has, there's such a way of knowing based on my race or ethnicity or gender or sex. And so what I think unintentionally or intentionally, I don't know. I, I'm assuming it's unintentional because I know most people that I know in these fields don't really understand fields outside their own as well as they do. They probably should. Um, so that, that's me trying to be generous on this. But I think they're treating it like a 21st century concept where hermeneutics is sort of, we're trying to decolonize hermeneutics. Uh, it's, yes. it's infused with Western knowledge, which is, of course, the instrument of oppression. Western knowledge is what is keeping these indigenous people groups or these other racial groups from understanding the meaning within their cultural context. So that's why they say when it's a Western way and all these, you get into all this language that they're using, and you realize it's just running parallel with these other movements in a secular culture. I don't know if they just know it because, uh, or if they understand what the, they're doing or if they just think that's the the way they have to speak now to um, appeal to the culture. I, I don't, I can't speak yeah. to their motive on that.